Coach Smith. What do you think of Wabash College here in Indiana? Well, you know, I've been here a couple times. Uh, it's my second time now. And, um, I'm impressed with their camps and their style, the way they run camps. Uh, you know, I like camps. You know, a lot of these kids you see, uh, they're going to wrestle till their senior year and they're going to move on. But, you know, this is one of their greatest experiences for them, you know, and uh, to be able to go with their team to camps. And we always got to recognize that the majority of campers will finish their senior year. And that experience at camp's important. So I try to make it important as much as I can. You know, you have a big impact on kids' lives. I was just telling you a story today about when I was like seven years old in Toledo, Ohio, and you wrestled at the World Cup. Yeah. And you were mad at your brother. But you still took the time, even after you were mad at your brother, you lost at the World Cup. You still took the time to, to sign our autographs. How important is it? You know, you just had a crowd of kids. You signed autographs, took pictures. How important is that to you? Well, it's, you know, it's, it takes time, you know. And sometimes you don't want to do it, but uh, we need to do it, you know. I don't care what sport it is. It's a privilege, and, and I always looked at it as a privilege, you know. I get to do this, you know. A lot of people don't get to do this. So, um, you know, I enjoy it, and, and um, again, you know, I think the camps is a place that we, we develop lifelong students of the sport and uh, people that have lifelong love of wrestling. Uh, their experience in, in wrestling uh, through their senior year or through as long as they go, most of them into seniors. Um, that's how you build your fan support up. You know, just guys like kids that come to camp and, and follow it from that point forward. You still strap up every day in the, the, the you know, practice room at Oklahoma State. You're, you're awesome at showing technique here. You still move real well. I showed you a picture. I couldn't even catch your image. You were a blur. I don't know if it was that cool. <laughs> but, you know, like, you're still in great shape. Um, what's the biggest attribute you think you have? I asked you if it was genetics. Why are you still able to move how you move? How are you able to, to, to get on the mat how you do? And how do you feel so good? No knee replacements, no hip replacements. How is that a thing for you? A little bit of luck, you know. Um, you know, I, I always had pretty good... Um, eating habits even after I graduated or after I finished up in 92 you know it, I didn't deviate too much from it because it was a lifestyle that I did in my uh, later 20s and it just kind of maintained with me for some point but uh, I think that if you practice getting on the mat uh, regularly you know especially during your season and make that a habit uh, it's a good habit to keep because it is hard it's physical you know it's definitely blue collar you know uh, my knees feel it today. I mean, I was on the mat for six hours today. My knees feel it. So it's not easy, but um, it's easy to get out of the habit. And that, as long as I'm coaching, I don't want to get out of the habit. You don't wrestle, Joe? No, I don't wrestle. You know, I, you know, I, I pretty much stopped uh, with Jamil Kelly and Eric Guerrero, that crew in 2004. Uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll roll around now, but wrestling hard at and, and, you know, I'm just, I want to I want to keep a healthy body, and, and wrestling doesn't mix with that sometimes. But I'm not saying some people can't. Um, uh, you know, I just feel like uh, I'd much rather drill, and, and uh, of course, I wrestle my two younger boys. Uh, and as long as they're weigh 75 and 50, I think I'm okay. <laughs> You're all right with them. <laughs> well, what, I mean, Joe gets big. Joe gets above 170, 180. You don't, you don't, you don't want to go there. He gets big. <laughs> yeah. Joe, but Joe gets big. No, he's big. Yeah, and that's no. something you, that that'd no. be hip replacement time. Yeah, I just you know, I'm not saying that I, I just don't feel that I need that right now. I'd much rather, you know, drill and, and um, teach technique and and maybe roll around with with like you know 75 year old eighth grader. You know, that's my idea of wrestling. <laughs> or or 55 year old eighth eight, eight year old. Now that's my idea of wrestling. Eight All-Americans this year, you know, and, and, and you guys are building. Everybody knows Penn State's had, you know, it was an all-time great year for them. They had five champs. 97, the Iowa Hawkeyes did it. I think they did it once in the 80s, too. I think you guys had done it before, but you had eight All-Americans. You had a great year. You know, what do yeah. you guys got to do to, what are you doing right now in Stillwater to get Joe ready, to get, you know, Piccinini ready, to get these guys ready to make a jump? And beat Penn State next year. Beat Ohio yeah, I know, State. You know, it's just you know, you, you stay up there is what you do, and you stay competitive. And that's not easy to do. You know, the dynamics of wherever you're at, there's issues, and there's and there's solutions that you got to come up with. You know, and those dynamics are different on every campus or wherever you're located. 
uh, our dynamics is a little different. And I think for us to challenge for championships, we need to continue to have eight All-Americans. That'll help. You know, you're going to win every now and then with eight All-Americans. So that's a good way of doing it, right? You know, it just happened to be a year that eight All-Americans uh, didn't win. It. Uh, most years, they would have won it, you know. So I think you just put, you, you just don't need to change a whole lot. You just need to keep doing what you're doing and understand your dynamics of how you can put your best team on the mat. Anybody migrating up? Any weight changes that, that I need to know about? I don't think so. Um, you know, right now, um, probably not. If, if something like that would happen, it would happen in this month. Um, so we, we, we come back as a team uh, this week for camp. And, uh, a lot of times we start putting some plans together for the future, and, uh, and the future means next season. So if something like that's going to happen, it would happen. But I don't see it, no. Um, but every year there's changes, you know. You always have an idea of what your team's going to be like, and uh, it doesn't seem like it ever finishes up like that. What's next for you? Are you training anything, anybody up for Paris? Are you going to be at the team camps? Daringer's a team member. Are you training anybody uh, well, up Well, I that? do plan on being involved a little bit, um, you know, with uh, Dayton Fix and his junior world championship run. And, and um, you know, I do, and I may spend a week this summer with uh, the senior level men, but I am going to spend some time with our women this year. I, I have a plan to go out and, and work with uh, uh, our world team, uh, maybe for a week, and maybe even spend some time with them at the world championship. So um, I think that's something that uh, we all should put time into right now. I think it's a be a good, good. Good, good thing for our college coaches to put time into our senior level women. Does Oklahoma State have camps coming up? Yes, next week. Um, actually starting Sunday. Yeah. Six hours a day on the mat for you then or not? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, maybe not that much, you know, um, but um, definitely 10 days of um, hitting it pretty hard, you know. And as we know, camps is, uh, camps is a time that uh, you put a lot of work in. All right, Coach. Got a flight coming up here in a little bit. You got anything else for me? That's it, man. Hey, thank, thank you for you. the time. It's always great okay. talking to you, and good luck to you guys next year. Okay. Thank you.